let us save the time. Meanwhile, uh, your friend will join. Uh, we can. Yes. Amr Zaman, Hussein, Saddam, Moshi just right now come. Saddam is still coming. Anyway. Uh, meanwhile, uh, your friend join. Uh, today we have uh, some talk regarding the OS or operating system, as well as one part that this semester I add to our uh, syllabus and uh, has the name of Artos. And our aim is that uh, study uh, this part also, which is very important. <laughs> embedded system uh, for today uh, part. What I plan that today I should finish this basic introduction about the embedded system. What's happening Mala, on your backside? I don't know. <laughs> and the electric memory, sir. Yeah, I think. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> My God. And uh, suddenly I saw that one person is climbing. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, from the next week, uh, we should start the Arduino part. Uh, and these two weeks, we just cover some important part or impo important definition. Really, the main part of our embedded system uh, course will be start from next week as the practical part and also theoretical part. But uh, the part that we study are uh, some necessary definition or some, we can say some necessary um, information that you should have about uh, the embedded system. And uh, then you have very special task to do, which is, of part of your uh, midterm exam, but uh, it, I will give you today, but the date will be specified uh, later. I think after three weeks, you have uh, the time to send. Okay, now please turn off your camera and just concentrate on whatever I will tell you. I'm going to start. Yes. Well, uh, we go for lecture number five to talk about the, about operating system fundamental, uh, which is one of the important uh, part of embedded system. Uh, we will talk about components of an OS, functional OS, and some type of OS and comparison between them. Uh, I will cover this part in the first uh, lecture of today and then the second I will talk regarding the authors. You should help me to finish this part soon because number of slides is more, but anyway, uh, some part of them we talked before in our, I think in our C lectures class. But anyway, uh, again, we will refresh it. First of all, what is operating system? Uh, which is uh, the most important software that run on the computer and it's manage the computer memory and process, as well as all of its uh, software and hardware. Uh, the main things that we can uh, do with this operating system is that it allows you to communicate with the computer without knowing how to speak to the computer language, means that the machine language, and without an operating system, a computer is useless. Uh, I'm sure that you don't remember, but that was in my childhood time that we using some running disk to turn on the computers and just boot the computer, come to zero level, that you can suppose run the C language on that. But nowadays, with the help of operating system, which is already installed, and you can easily install on your computer, this job is become uh, very fast. 
operating system or OS is most important part than run on a computer. And it's a program that after initially load into the computer by the boot program, it will manage all of our application program into the computer and manage the computer memory and process and also control all hardware components. Again, this part that I tell you is repeated from the part number one, but it uh, has the more scientific or more embedded systems person's point of view regarding the OS. What, uh, what is the real job for the operating uh, system? Is something that I bring here for you in this figure. Which it can allow us to communicate with computer without knowing the task of the computer language, uh, knowing the, the speak to the computer without knowing the computer language. And uh, your OS can manage all of the software and hardware of your computer. Suppose you will see memory management job, processor management, file management, device management, security comment inter, uh, interpretation, secondary storage uh, management, audio management, networking, com communication management, job accounting, all of the world which can be uh, do with the help of uh, this OS part. And most of the time, there are several different computers programs that are running at the same time. Suppose you are running MATLAB on your computer, you play the music, you open the world file, you know, all of them are running and uh, the OS, in my point of view, it's become something like the foundation for your system, for your CPU, that everything can build based on that. And what is the rule of this foundation? Suppose when earthquake will come, all the loads from the earthquake will hand over through this foundation and it can sustain the building through that. Then if we think that whole our PC as the software and hardware part as the building, when earthquake or any crash to the program will happen, this is the job of OS that can manage the problem or manage the program properly uh, with uh, um, its uh, ability and programming skill which they put inside the OS. Um, the operating system can, as you will see in this photo, coordinate all uh, of these jobs and make sure that each program gets what it needs. Suppose, board needs some interrupts or some key comments from your keyboard. Music needs some speaker jobs, it will do. MATLAB needs some, of, I don't know, some data or some sort of memory part that can handle the part, you know. All or the last job can be done with the help of OS. Uh, we have one word that we call it multitasking. Multitasking is something like that. You can do some job in the parallel uh, mode. You will do multiple job or multiple task, and the OS determine which application should run in what order and how much time should be allowed for each application. It's very important. Maybe uh, now even you can also sense the difference between Windows XP and Windows 10. What will happen really with the Windows? Uh, as the Windows generation, who can tell me? Let me ask uh, Hussein. Hussein, what's the difference between, suppose, Windows 7 and Windows XP, and Windows XP and Windows 10? What do you feel? Hussein, answer. Uh, our audio is there. 
Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, then I think Hussein is sleeping. Who can answer my question? Sir? <laughs> I can answer yes, your question. Good. Um, so, sir, uh, uh, in my opinion, I think Windows XP, um, first of all, with the new operating system, they changed the user interface. And then another point um, would be the back end. They do a lot of work with the drivers just to make sure that everything works um, better in the new generation. Um, between Windows XP and Windows 10, um, I think 64-bit operating systems were introduced as well. So there, there, there's a, there are a lot of things that change with an operating system as it evolves. Um, those are just a few examples. And you, you mean that there is no difference between Windows XP and Windows 10? Uh, there's a huge difference, sir. A huge well, what is that? List, list some of them that you feel. I don't want that you copy paste from Google. But what what exactly you feel when you work with Windows 10 as a user so side? I, oh, as a user, um, I see the visual differences. So I see the like for instance. Yes, visual. Kaya, you you didn't notice that the speed of the start of the Windows is changed. Oh yes, that too, sir. Yes, it's changed. You didn't see the memory side that when you run the system when you install the windows the space that you need for windows is changed mm, yes uh, that's true it has changed <laughs> and yeah, another it's thing it's, 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 another it's, thing you didn't see that when you use the different program inside the windows the percentage of failing is less Mm, yes, sir. It, it has greatly improved in that regard. Yes. Who who has another experience? Ray, what what is your experience? Suppose one example. Good point. What 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 Roy said previous time, I, I I mean, if we compare Windows XP and Windows 10, whatever hardware that we wanted to run, suppose graphical card when we buy in Windows XP after Windows installation, again you should install the driver. But what did happen with Windows 10? Most of the critical part of your computer's driver already they built inside the OS. Do you mean this point, Roy? Hmm. Yes, good point. Well, just like that you understand that the OS development that just it's happened around 10 years, I think. As I remember, uh, Windows 10, there, there was Windows XP, Windows 8, and then Windows Windows 7, Windows 8, and then Windows 10. Around 10 years, I think. I, I will show you the history also today. But just so that you understand that this multitasking job and also driver for them already inbuilt 
inside the OS. And uh, now as the user, your load after installing the OS is reduced. When you just install the Windows, most of the part is going on. Um, suppose if you have some special hardware, that is another story. But common hardware, which most of the computers and PC are using that, there is no need to install. Anyway, uh, we expected then this OS managed uh, the sharing of internal memory among the multiple applications. It should handle input and output and uh, from uh, attached hardware device, such as hard disk, printer, dial-up ports, that nowadays dial-up port is gone. Hmm? It should send a message to each application or interactive users or to a system operator about the status of operation and any role that may have occurred. It can offload the management of Backup, backup, uh, so that the initializing, in, initiating application is free from this work. And one computer that can provide parallel processing and operating can manage how to divide the program so that it's run one more than one processor at a time. Uh, let us continue this uh, OS, but now let us see the history of this OS. History of this OS is maybe uh, nice for you that, you know, in 1940 or till early 1950, uh, when the electronic computers were first introduced, they were created without any OS system. And all programming that we have done that was in machine language, often by wiring up light boards to control the machine basic. That was a tough job for the user to interact proper with the PC that they have. And during this generation, computers were generally used to solve simple math calculation. Operating systems were not be, uh, even necessary. But in 1955 to 1965, the mainframe, uh, which is the first generation or first operation uh, operating system, used for some real work that GM NAAIO, uh, which is product in 1956 by the General Motor Research Division, and they call it IBM 704. That was, we can say, the initial point, which uh, people will start to using the OS for them. And Operating system in 1950 were called just single stream batch processing system because the data was submitted in some group. 1965 to 1980, still you, you, none of you was in the world, uh, and I think after 1980, just I come. Means that the, the history is this much old. Okay, in 1960. The OS designers were able to develop the system of multi-programming in which the programmer will be able to perform some multiple jobs and something like that. And um, another major development during this third generation of the OS was phenomenal growth of the mini computer. Mini, mini computers slowly, slowly come to the picture. Before that, we have the mainframe, which they were big, and uh, maybe for the home that was not uh, useful. If the mini program helped to create a whole new industry and the development uh, of more PDPs, and these PDPs uh, help uh, lead to creation of personal computers which are created in the fourth generation. Then the fourth generation, which now we are in that from 1980 till today, uh, saw the creation of some personal computing and a personal computer, which people call it PC, was so affordable that it uh, made it possible for the single individual could be able 
to own one for personal use. One of the major factor in uh, creation of personal computer was the birth of Microsoft and Windows operating system, which they come in 1975 by Paul Allen and Bill Gates, as you know them as the big person in the world, which passage of time New operating system were introduced, and nowadays we have the newest version of Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10, which are mostly nowadays used. That was very little history that I found through the net, but maybe if you see this figure, you will understand much more meaningful things, which is the start from 1975 till now, we can say. And I actually didn't find after Windows 7 photo, maybe it will be available now, but the time that I prepare PPT, that was just till nine uh, Windows 7 part. You will see that support 1980, we have IBM, we have Commodore. Uh, let me tell you one truth. When I was child, I had one Commodore uh, uh, and um, I'm playing more with that. I learned how to do the coding in uh, QBasic with that. Uh, means that little bit I'm old, uh, but uh, suppose Amiga I just saw, but I didn't play with that. Apple Macintosh portable I didn't see in my life, but I see this part, this type of computer. IBM PC XT, when we were in guidance school, we worked with this part. And I can say with Macintosh, uh, I have few experience. With Apple, new Apples I have, but with that part, 1991, I don't have. But Amiga, suppose, 4,000. Uh, 4, 4, I worked with this, with the Dust 3.1. I worked with, uh, again, Windows 3.1, I worked. Windows 95, I worked. Windows NT, I worked. Then 2001, uh, especially 2000 Microsoft, I worked. And then XP will come here. You know, Windows XP was mid, of these two years, and then Windows 7 come out. I think I should have one more yes. List of Microsoft project till 2060 I have, which is a start from 85, and you will see the various part. Yes, 2002 Windows XP NT. And that was just for um, network management part. When Microsoft, you know better than me, server and NT was more for the uh, management. And nice thing is that, suppose, after X3 we have Vista. Vista was good, but it's free. And Windows 7 was better. And you know, Windows 8 come out, even 8.1, but it's free. And Windows 10 was better and more sustainable uh, than others. That was for the Microsoft uh, operating system. We don't want to put the advertisement for them, but really they have done the nice job till today. But what about other um, operating system? We had more. Suppose for uh, Microsoft Mobile, they start in 2000, year 2000 until today they start to do. And suppose when CE and Windows CE they made, I work with Windows CE. Exactly in the year 2007, I worked with that, but um, yeah, that was also fake for the embedded uh, part. And you will see, suppose, Android come to pictures from 2003, and Google Android from 2005 till now it exists, okay? Now we have um, more version of Android. Who can tell me what is the latest language of Android, uh, latest release for Android? Android is Android what? Hello sir. Android is sir is. Yes. Okay. And um, for the iPhone. Uh, I was putting one for sir. Yes, one for sir. And uh, you will see that. 
we have the different different OS and even we have some names that maybe you don't uh, know them. Suppose Symbian or Karn or Ryan. Uh, these are the names that if today we will review, but really now in the world of embedded system and especially for the mobile as the one example of embedded system that today we will review, some of these OS are tied. Nobody will use them. Huh? Let's go. Uh, we will talk regarding this figure more uh, for today lecture especially. Uh, what we expected for OS is that it all should have three elements. One is that user interface or UI, which is the part of the OS that you interface with that. Next part is the kernel, which is the core of the OS and interact with the BIOS, okay, uh, at the end. And the UI at the other end means that kernel is something like bridge that can uh, connect the BIOS to the UI part from the two parts. One is BIOS, another one is UI. And uh, from OS, we expected that we have the file management system, which is organized and manage the file. These are the symbol for the OS, which are found through the net, and maybe suppose I don't know, Susan, you you know or no? I don't know. Uh, I didn't work with that. But Mint, suppose now we work. Who can tell me what is Mint? Mint. A sleepy lecture. Welcome. Um, uh, the, uh, this may be Linux. Yes, Mint is for the Linux, like Ubuntu. Debian is supposed for yeah. Linux. Apple, you know, Oracle, you know, FreeBSD, and uh, so on. Red Hat, yeah, yes, yes. All are the name of the famous OS that. Uh, we can use it. Let us have the line the milestone of OS that here maybe you can see better. They will start from Unix and suppose Apple DOS will come from here, 1980. Suppose in 1990 Windows XP come. Then Linux will come out on 90, which I think 1992 or three around that. And then in year 2000, we have Windows ME, then Windows XP come out, Windows Vista, and Windows 7, and after that, 8, 7, 10. Uh, even they have some release for suppose for Windows 7, something like Home Edition, I don't know, Office Edition, like that, which all of them are gone, and now most people try on Windows 10. Uh, we talk about, about job of the operating system, but let us uh, have more idea about the function that we expected from OS part. First, we talk, we want that they will do the file management, means uh, one of the important function of operating system is this file management, which with the help of this function, the operating system tries to manage on a, all activity and related to the files. Yeah, suppose like naming the file, sharing the file, organizing, protecting, and uh, retrieval of the file. The next function that we expected from OS is memory allocation and deallocation, which in that with the help of memory management function of the OS, it's helped in allocation the memory to the program which need the space. Also, it helps in the allocation of the memory from the programs, which do not require extra memory space, or which are not in work anymore. This 
help the user in saving or deleting any files easily uh, by checking the memory space available on the computer uh, system. The next thing that we need is managing the process, which we have several types of processing the computers. And with the help of this managing uh, job of the OS, it's become easy for one to manage and creating and deleting any process. I can say most nice job in OS is securing the data. You know better than me. If Windows 7 and Windows Vista and Windows 8 somehow they fail because mainly they reported about the security of the data and security of the OS. Uh, by this, uh, by the software, is that OS software that they have in Microsoft. Then, with the help of OS, we can also keep our data secure, whether uh, we are using it on phone or we are using it on laptop or computer system. It also helps in protecting the data from unauthorized access, and the security model is also being used for protecting the data from some malware. Okay. Now we can have some graph like this, which is shows the OS job, like file and data management, memory management, device management, process management, fault management, security and communication, and uh, some application management built in utility programs and control of computer hardware can be do with them. Suppose some multi-user uh, two or more users work with the computer at the same time. Multitasking work, we you know two or more process that's running at the same time. And multi-trading means that two or more part of same process running at the same time. These are the nice job or nice uh, type of the operating system that we can have. Here I name some op famous operating systems. Suppose Ubuntu, Mac, Windows, Android, iOS, Linux, Tizen. I don't know how much you, how many of you work with Tizen. Debian, mainly I use with Raspberry Pi with that, and Chrome. We know them as the operating system and famous type. But type of the operating system is another um, part that we are going to talk regarding the operating system uh, can be classified as the method of operating the system and a mode of system access. As computer have programmed and developed, so have the type of the operating system come to picture and many computer will fall into more than one category. Real-time operating system we can have. We can have multi-access operating system. We can have multi-processing operating system, multi-tasking operating system, time sharing, multi-programming, batch processing operating system, single tasking operating system, and single user multitasking. These are the types of the multi uh, of operating system that uh, we can categorize uh, them. I'm not going to uh, deep for these parts, but mainly the name of them are clear and no need to see. But little bit I, we will touch regarding that. Uh, suppose if I want to name for PC operating system, we had Microsoft, Mac, uh, 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 IO, and Linux. For MS Windows version, we have home, professional, you know, business and non-professional job. Suppose for Windows 95, 98, ME, XP, like that. And for professional uh, users, we had Windows NT and Windows 2000, uh, which uh, were different from each other. That was one example. But if I want to name some operating system, we can have this list that we are going to discuss about them uh, very fast uh, today.
among that list, what I found, uh, top 20 OS in the year of 2000, there was uh, the, this list. Maybe it changed in 2020, but as the time that I prepared the PPT, the list shows something like that. So, and shows that suppose Android is the most rated one, Windows 7 even is most rated than Windows 10. This count by the number of user which is using that OS, okay? And suppose quantity of uh, person who buy that product. And you know, Ubuntu, even you know, Ubuntu is free. Whenever you apply, you can download it, but it means that it's even uh, have the lower rank than Windows 10 that should person should uh, pay for that. Zulia, suppose, Oracle Linux, Windows 8, you will see there is the a main, and also I try to give you the icon for them that later if you want, you can uh, have the information about them. But from the OS part, I think everything starts from this. DOS uh, was the main uh, part, and the first PC which using the OS was this one. Uh, and the problem for the DOS that was that was not multitasking, and only one program could run at the time. And that was something like Linux things that you will do. I don't know that how many of you work with DOS, but in our time we started with DOS. Uh, and Suppose Windows XP come, uh, communicate directly with the BIOS, but allows commands to be entered via the command prompt, something that we in Windows tell, but that's exactly that was uh, the first interest. Nowadays, as I say, we have uh, this OS, which is using more. Suppose Windows 7 is the most popular one, Windows 8 and then are the second stage. Then we have Android OS, iOS, and Linux, which are the uh, have the another rank for us. Now let us see, because really we cannot say that which OS is good, which OS is bad. Always we know that which embedded system we want to use for. It. Suppose if I want to run on a PC, really the PC should be same, and then install all the OS system, then I can compare them. Otherwise, suppose if your CPU is different than me, and you use, suppose Windows XP, maybe you feel it, it's better, or even not uh, having the good performance. Or if my CPU is, CPU is better than you, maybe I will feel Windows 10 is good or no, something like that. That is why what I try to do here, I uh, try to compare them with the example of mobile phone and uh, describe some OS on a mobile phone system uh, that maybe it will help you to understand this OS, something like history part. On mobile phone, as the example of the OS, these are, uh, as an example of embedded system, these o OS are recently used, and some of them are died, we can say. Suppose Symbian was one, uh, which is officially the property of the Nokia. Nokia company killed itself by using the Symbian, because uh, that was greater range of application, high quality games, better inbuilt web browser, connectivity is a lot easier and faster in that. That was real player, a smart movie, everything was there, but the OS is not was not available for PC and Symbian OS can be easily affected by the virus. And no virtual memory was available. Then the Nokia died with the help of the OS that they uh, generate. I mean, remember one point, having the OS is, another, is one thing, but having the successful OS for embedded system also 
can scale a product or company or can make it big. But again, so then Android will come to the picture that was the lunar space platform for mobile phone and uh, was released under the Apache V2 open source license, no need to pay for the Android and developer. And that was the point that saved Android till today. That developer of the Android, no need to pay. It will be free for them and they can use it easily for the application. And it has the good user interface, many applications which uh, extend the functionality of device you can have, and, and it has the open platform and cost effective, but low security, high device fragmentation, and complex layouts is the problem with the Android. You will see security also for Symbian was less, but uh, because they should pay for the Symbian, and that was limited to our company, the Symbian is failed and Android come up. Apple iOS is one more which is used on iPhones and iPad and iPod Touch uh, from the Mac OS operating system. And the advantage of that is that its performance is awesome. Look at uh, Uber stylish and it's become the style version. <laughs> Uh, generate less heat when compared to the Android, best gaming experience, vast number of applications, suits for the business and gaming, excellent UI and multitasking, excellent security, high security, you will see all the points is good, but disadvantage is that it's not flexible, only supports iOS device, it's limited to Mac for. The iOS is not open source, Second bad point, the main disadvantage of that is costly apps and no wage support. You cannot change your ringtone, but there are many alternatives to do that, something like that. And Apple restricted the con connectivity with iTunes and uh, something like that. And device are very pricey. Applications are very large when compared to other mobile platforms and they can only support single SIM, not hybrid, uh, hybrid SIM support. You will see that uh, this also is the uh, right things about the Mac OS. But Mac OS was another operating that power every Mac and that's because it's designed especially for the hardware of the uh, Mac product. It has high security, blower free, optimizing is good, but not flexible, expensive, and closed source we had in Mac OS. Maybe some of you see the BlackBerry OS, uh, which is uh, made by the BlackBerry Limited, uh, means that that company, that is excellent connectivity, especially for messengers, VBM, Yahoo, Gtag, WhatsApp, and so on. Amazing email, much user friendly, and very fast and snappy, but battery life not uh, great in some models. Camera quality was not good. Application support was bad. Almost all models have the similar utility and features. You will see that this OS also failed. Windows Mobile Phone, that was another thing which come out from Microsoft and based on the experience that they have on the MS Plus, that was easy to use, availability of the software, supports for new hardware, and that was compatible with MS3 web software, but the disadvantage, that was high price, rebooting a system all the time, poor security, closed secure, source and full technical support. Uh, just give you two, three minutes that finish the first part. The next OS was Bada, which uh, Bada was uh, invented for the first Bada phone from the Samsung. This also killed itself because even that was a robust developer community as well and has the 
large as library to choose from, but because of the open source nature, manufacturers tend to install their own skin on the top of the OS, and by doing this, the user experience may be different from one device to another one, and it means that that OS also was not successful. Uh, Garnet or Palm also was one which is come out from the smartphone, and uh, that was greater processing power, advanced multimedia features, extend wireless connectivity, increase the security, but not best for multitasking, and thousands of smaller productivity, boosting application work on the Palm OS, and the system is not necessarily designed to support the larger. Means that the support for that, that was not successful. What we understand from all is that OS is critical part, which can bring the success to your embedded system as a mobile, or can kill your product and your company. We can stop now just for five minutes. If you don't have question, we can stop. Any question? No, sir. Any question from a student side? Okay, I speak okay. fast, but we can reach for the next part to the Arthos part. Uh, I will give you five minutes and come back after that. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, we will come back soon. Okay, sir.
Okay, uh, please turn on your camera that we do the attendance. Fast. Kaya. Well, let me take the photo and then Some student still is not joining. Reza, you didn't join. Mala didn't join. Last hmm? maybe you didn't in that class. No, they. I call them. It's calling them and they didn't respond. Reza Mala, Muhammad Azmin, Unshi, he didn't come. Okay, I do the attendance. Okay, uh, let us continue for today. Maybe I will touch. Uh, more than 10 minutes to finish the auto part also, because I insist to start the uh, RNA film next week. Okay, what we touch on, touch regarding the whole concept of the embedded system, about the OS, which again, we should talk more today. And now we should talk about the software in embedded system. We say that, Embedded software is a piece of software that uh, is uh, embedded in hardware or non-PC device. And it's written specifically for the particular hardware that is run on and usually has processing and memory constraint because of the device limited computing capabilities. Example of hardware of uh, embedded software uh, can be found in some GPS device, factory robots, and some calculator, and even modern smartphone more, uh, a smartwatch that recently people will use it more. Embedded software is uh, very similar to one word that we call it firmware, and uh, as they usually serve uh, the same function, and the later, however, is the special type of the embedded software that is written in non volatile memory, such as such RAM and EPRAM, which cannot easily be modified, uh, hence the name of the firm. And it's used primarily for running or booting up the device. Um, if I want to say in brief, I can say embedded software is used for overall operation of our device and can be very simple, such that used for controlling the light in the homes and can run 8-bit microcontroller with just a few kilobytes of the memory. Uh, it can be quite even complex, something like running all electronic components of the modern a smart car, complete, uh, complete with the uh, climate control, automatic uh, cruising and collision sensing, and as well as control navigation. Complex embedded uh, software uh, can also be found in some place like aircraft and other avionic system in very complex flight by wire system used in fighter plants and even in missile uh, guidance system. Uh, these are could be the embedded system, but let us see what is the embedded software and application software. 
The main difference between the embedded software and application software is usually, is, uh, usually tied to the, some specific device, uh, which serving as the OS itself, with some restriction that ties to the device specification. So updates and addition are strictly controlled where application software provides the functionality in the computers and runs on top of an actual full OS, so it has fewer restrictions in terms of resources. Uh, and the <coughs> software in device uh, or in system is a computer software, which they return to control the machines or device that are not typically truth of as computers and commonly the people know that as the embedded system it's typically specialized for particular hardware that is run on and has time and memory uh, constraint this term is sometimes used uh, interchangeability with the framework and we can find this embedded software in RAM image, programming language and program models. Suppose in RAM image this is the final stage of software which called RAM image uh, which is just an image of uh, a unique sequence and arrangement of the pixel and embedded software is also a unique placement and arrangement at each RAM address of bytes for instruction data. Then ROM is a file which is consisting of the data from the ROM chip and it usually contains the data from firmware and arcade board or a video game which is used in embedded, uh, which is usually used in uh, embedded uh, system. RAM image can also be used for testing for your uh, to um, permanent uh, writing to the RAM chip. Uh, in terms of RAM image, it is mostly um, and commonly used uh, to describe any software image suppose optical or chip based one and that is used during the process of hardware emulation. Um, what we can see suppose here this is the memory allocation and the system of the ROM which uh, here we have some word that we call it ARTOS okay and data and vector address in the next part of today, I'll just talk about this word as the authors and the main uh, aim to open the embedded software part is uh, that I want to tell you more about this authors part, okay? Just keep it in your mind, we will talk later on that. For embedded system, we learn so many things, OS, memory, input, output, display, and that. But one thing that we know is the programming language. You know that this programming language is the part that at the final stage, we should do some programming, but different, different language should be there. Generally, the language which is understandable for the most of the embedded system is assembly, which I think you had the course with that. But this assembly job is that from the machine a specific assembly language program, it will use the assembler and it will change to the machine code, which is in the term of bytes for linked program. And we have another part from the library which make the linker. These two you do the reallocation address from the memory part and then with the data byte, which is the loader part, they will go for the device run, program a burner, and then the result will come to the embedded system run memory. 
This is how we do the conversation process of the uh, assembly suppose language to the image ROM. But which different language we have? We have C or C++, which is more nowadays used. I can tell you that 12 years back or around, uh, we can say that 12 years back, the C language, nobody believed that can enter this much to the embedded. And I remember even when they teach us the embedded language, they will tell us that don't use the C because C is not reliable for embedded. But now what people say that, people say that don't, no need to follow the assembly. You go through the C and C++ because there is the lots of new and nice thing which happened in the embedded world an embedded system, which one of them is this board. I mean, Arduino here, as you can see, Arduino board, which work on C and C++ uh, board. And there is a survey even in 2016, which it shows that C and C++ is the top rank, which people prefer to use in embedded language. We have more language, something like Rust, which is just the C++, uh, Rust is to C++ and some another open source, which is developed by the Mozilla Research primarily. And uh, they are focusing on the safety and integrity. This language introduced in 2006, and um, it's also used, but not much more user-friendly, I can say, like C and C++ that people now prefer. Python is the another aim, and what it will going to happen soon, I mean, less than five years, is that Python will kill the C and C++ in embedded system due to its simplicity, due to its speed, due to its um, simple syntax that you can find, and nice open source job that people have done. And then as the second, now it is its second, but I'm sure less than four years, it's become the top ranked language in embedded system. But for just this reason, I will put one or two lecture to work with Arduino with Python language. And I wish that that time you enjoy the lectures. Last uh, semesters, this, uh, I think this is the third time that I teach this in Jiangxi University. Last uh, years, I didn't teach that to the student, but for your course especially, I'm going to do that, and maybe we have some extra than usual time, but you should know it, my friend, because I want that you have the good job, unfortunately, in embedded system, and you should know this Python job. VSQL and Verilog is also more demanding embedded system uh, language, and mainly they are working with FPGA, but, and uh, both of them are alive, both of them are working. Verilog is simpler than VSQL, but uh, if you go for the high-tech programming in for FPGA, people prefer to work with the VSQL job. And uh, maybe we have, uh, I don't know, in your careers, you have this subject again or no, but uh, for the students who work with the FPGA, these two uh, language they will learn. This is not something that we will touch, but just have some information about them. Uh, but I'll tell you that in my time, they said that just rely on assembly, but what was the advantage for assembly? Was that because that was the low level language and the number of the error after compiling that was less and PC or any embedded system, it will understanding much more easier than suppose C language. It means that these codes were sensitive to the processor, memories, ports, and device hardware. And uh, also system needs the smaller memory to handle that problem. That, uh, sorry, a small memory to handle this language. And memory needed does that depends on the programmer data type selection and the rule declaration 
uh, for the compiler. Mainly in my time was the problem for the compiler. And let me tell you one nice thing that USB that was recently released in that time and the programmer which using the USB, they were failing. And we are using the USART communication for our um, microcontroller to program and with the user that was perfect but with the usb most of the time the ic will burn or ic will not program proper that was the problem for the assembler or the id that we use and in order you know you know that they kill this problem and they will do it very nicely then using the c for programming c what is the advantage means that this C language is marvelous, less number of the syntax you need, and also procedure-oriented language it has, there is no object. And uh, in line assembly codes of C function, yeah, you can use, means that when you will do the assembly, you can put some, uh, when you are using the C language, meanwhile you can put some the assembly part and you can do your job which nowadays really nobody will use it but for some critical job i accept that people will use it that was the very very fast review that i have done that but i think that because this point i uh, made from different different reference like that you can also read from the ppt but the next part that I wanted to tell you, and we should discuss uh, for today, uh, is the second part that we call it Arthos. For just one or two minutes, is there any question now from a student side? Any question? Reza, did you enter or no? Oh, sorry, I think. Okay. Reza, did you Reza, I don't know. So he's in the room now. He's in the room, but I don't know. Is why we have this much delay? Uh, uh, sir, uh, your previous call, you didn't end that time. That's why the most of the students, when they are entering the class, they are entering the previous one. Uh, I don't know. Why previous one? I invite again and call the new one. Okay, now all of you are here. all call, then try again. That will be good. Now all of you are here or no? Can we continue? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, we need to continue about these ROS, which I recently add to the syllabus. And the main aim is that nowadays most of the embedded system are working with the autos and the real time operating system. Let us see what is this. Arthos, which is the another version, or maybe something different than uh, OS part. First, what we say that embedded system is single function, for example, pager, mobile phone, and tightly constrained, something cost, size, performance, power, etc. It should be proper for us. And it's reactive and real time, something like car cruise controller and delaying computation and Failure of the system. This is something that expected for them. But the hardware is not whole system. Suppose a microelectronic system is the result of projection of some architecture, some hardware, and some software, which is distinguished, but it's gross functional behavior. And software is an important part of the product and must be part of the design process or we only design in the components of the 
system. In the other world, we know that the word embedded is, is equal to something that we said dedicated. An interaction with the physical process, something like sensors, actuator, and processor, and critical properties are not all functional, suppose real time, pulse recovery, power, security, and robustness are uh, the, some points that we should think when we work with the embedded system. But really, what is embedded software? One definition is that, that software that is directly in contact with or significantly affected by the hardware that is the execute on or can directly influence the behavior of the hardware. When we hear the word operating, the first one that come uh, to our mind are Windows, Linux, Ubuntu, Mac, or computers and uh, for computers, and Android and iOS for mobile phone. But a real-time operating system is a special uh, OS specialty design for embedded system. Then with this introductory we will start to know about Arthur's or real-time operating system. You know, embedded developers are often <laughs> accustomed to their the metal programming or have a reservation toward using this word, I mean, Arthur's. And here's, uh, here are and why you should consider using one. You know, today, product cycle are become a little bit complex. And with the available development of time shrinking yet required in the future of them, uh, we have some busy developer that needs to way of doing more in some less time. Then it can often make the sense to use the real time operating system to gain some efficient in task management and resource sharing job. Then, simply, Arthos is the piece of software which is designed to efficiently manage the time of central processing unit of, or CPU. And this is especially relevant to or embedded system when time is critical. Suppose, which place in aeroplane, in metros in train, we need some special and real-time operating system that can work very fast without delay and that. But what type of uh, real-time we can have? We can have some hard real-time, which in that job must be completed, which is within the deadline. A static or dynamic schedule task we have, and hard to solve if the task is involved by some external event. And it has been researched over the 20 years, but there is no successful commercial product yet. Means that hard real time still is under process. Soft real time, there is no hard real time in that. And order of execution is determined by priority OS cannot generally guarantee the specific timing behavior, but it's work in most of the practical cases. Um, in carefully designed system, Arthos, if not a specific, otherwise denotes this class. But what a difference between operating systems, something like Windows and Arthos, suppose, uh, which we find is respond the time to some external event, okay? Uh, I don't know how many of you really work with the windows to logging the data. If you work some specific hardware, which we call it data logger, you will see that there is some lag from windows to store your data. And this is the problem of the OS. Uh, I will just tell you the name. If you want later, you you can work on that. If you work, suppose, with the lab view, uh, which is can work as the event data logger, 
If you run it under Windows, you will see that this OS will generate the time, and delay time for you, uh, which maybe you will lose some of data, okay? Exactly if you have some artists on your computers or your PC, it can be much more efficient than OS for your embedded system. Uh, an ordinary OS will provide some non-deterministic response to the event with no guarantee with respect to when they will be proceed. And uh, while trying to stay uh, responsive, the user privacy of the OS to be responsive is more important than handling and underlying the task. On the other hand, uh, Arthos provide the real-time response and highly deterministic reaction. And developer will use OS such as Windows or Linux will be quite familiar with the characteristics of an embedded Arthos. They are designed to run in system with a limited uh, memory and to operate identity uh, then uh, efficiently without the need to be reset. And because Arthos is designed to respond to events quickly and perform other the heavy loads, it can be a slower at big task when compared to another OS. Then remember this point. The basic uh, difference uh, of GPOS or an Art, uh, Arthos lies in the nature of the system. For example, when Time is critical or not. Normal operating systems that we do in computer are not time critical and nothing is going to happen if task few more seconds will take place to open the file. But in some application like ABS in car, timing is very critical. Then, if we want to give some scientific definition about the Arthos, we can say Arthos is the ability of operating system to provide the required level of service in the bounded response time. Example, airbag of the car, which it should fix the time immediately after the crash will happen. Now you tell me if the OS of your car is not working proper, with some delay and airbag will open with some delay. What will happen to the passenger? Means that the um, problem which occurred after the accident will be more. In answers, we have some terms. Suppose something like task that we know is a set of related tasks that are jointly able to provide some system functionality. We know the term of job, which is the small piece of work that can be assigned to the processor and that may or may not require resources. Release time of a job, it's a time of a job at which job become ready for execution. Execution of the time is another term, which is the time taken by the job to finish in the execution. Deadline of the job is the term which a job should finish its execution processor that are also know that active resources that are important for execution of job. Maximum it's allowable responsible time of the job is called relative deadline. And response time of the job is the length of the time for the release time of job when instant finish and absolute deadline is the relative deadline, which also includes its relative time. These are the terms, and when we compare, when we work with an artist, we should know them. But what is the feature of artists? Is uh, something like that. It's up by very less memory, consumer fewer resource, response time are, are highly predictable. Um, Upper dedicable environment we have the kernel, say the state of uh, interrupt task, and then add uh, the determinant which task it should be run next. The kernel restores the state of the task and task control of the CPU for the task. I have one table which here I say 
the general purpose operating system or OS that we know and Arthos on the other side and we can compare them together. And mainly, I will not uh, go much uh, through this table due to the lack of the time, but mainly you should see the problem is for the timing that we have in the GPU OS or general purpose OS and Arthos, okay? Then now we have two type of operating system one is that GPOS, another one is Arthur. So real-time operating system for general purpose, the purpose operating system. This Arthur software can be divided into two parts. One is hard Arthur, another one is soft Arthur. Hard Arthur is the hard real-time operating system as the time critical deadline that must be met. Otherwise, the system filter can be occurred. Some example, right? Eight traffic control, vehicle subsystem control, nuclear power plant, and medical critical care system and aircraft system. And soft authors are uh, deadline can be occasionally need, so so they can work and accept some delay by operating system. Missing deadlines will not cause any uh, critical failure also we know it as the best effort system example can be some multimedia player control telecom or network switching websites and service and computer games but we have one more uh, type of the authors that we call it frame real time which is this type of authors needs to follow the deadlines. However, missing the deadlines may not have the big impact for that. And uh, maybe the various type of multimedia application are the parts for the authors. Which components are more important for the authors is the next part that I wanted to uh, tell you about it, uh, which we can name them as the scheduler, symmetric methods, function library, memory management, fast disp uh, dispatch latency, and user-defined data object, which we know them as the important components of this Arthos. And which task we expected for the Arthos is that scheduling, resource allocation, and intro handling. Suppose for the task management in real application, any process which takes the specific execution uh, uh, execution time and occupies predefined amount of the memory, we can call these things as the task. Then task management is the process of management through the life cycle of uh, Arthos. Uh, this task manager will provide some following information. Suppose number of the tasks, resource requires, and release time, execution time, and deadlines. And Arthos scheduler can use scheduling algorithm to organize them. Uh, many embedded systems and maybe even many embedded programmer, they are uh, uh, <laughs> they even it's from one article that they say that they are shy away from using the Arthur's because they suspect that it's at too much complexity. But really Arthur's typically requires five percent of CPU resource not more, and while there will be always some more resources, and authors can make up it for areas such as simplified determination and have lots of uh, benefits that, uh, suppose in some application like this, we can see. In airlines reservation system, air traffic controller, in system that provide immediate updating, in weather system, command control, um, in uh, internet uh, telephony, in anti-like break system, 
part uh, pacemaker and automated jobs, they use mainly the altars to manage the timing part. Maybe then some of you say that can we name some altars? Yes, Windows C, RT Linux, and Linux OS and VX work is more famous, which I work suppose, for example, with Windows C. And these are some of the popular ones which is used in industry. And most popular one is VX work as the Arcos uh, that can work really in the industry part. Arcos uh, have some advantage like this that it can run on application in any diverse and challenging environment condition. It runs efficiently even on very limited hardware resource. It consumes less power and memory. And the kernel size is small and can fit limited RAM storage. But on the other side, it has some distance. Arthos is system can uh, concentrate on a few tasks. It's really hard for these systems to do the multitasking. Then against OS, you can see that multitasking is not possible. A specific drivers are required for that. Plenty of resources are used by Arthos. And the task which have the low priority need to wait for the long time as an Arthos uh, maintenance, the accuracy of the program, which are under execution. Minimal switching of tasks is done in real-time operating system, and it uses complex algorithm. Arthos also use the lots of resource, which sometimes not suitable for the resource. In some, we can say that Arthos is uh, some sort or some type of the uh, operating system which intended to serve the real-time application that process data as it's come in mostly without buffer delay it offers priority based scheduling which allows you as the user to separate the analytical processing from non-critical processing some important part of authors are scheduler uh, symmetric multiprocessing functional, function library, memory management, fast dispatch uh, latency, and user-defined data, object, and classes. We can have three types of authors, hard time, soft, and frame time. And auto system occupy very less memory and consume fewer resources. Performance is most important factor requires to be considered when we want to select the Arcos and general purpose system, uh, operating system, GBOS, is used for desktop PC and laptop, while Arcos only applied in the embedded application part. And uh, real-time systems are used in airline, reservation system, air traffic control, etc. And the biggest drawback Arthos is that a system only concentrate on of the few tasks, but a big but. People are working on the Arthos, and I think that soon this big drawback will go out. Uh, I collect this part regarding the Arthos from different resource, but that was the main part that I found, some new and informative part regarding the Arthos. But, a big but again, um, something that I wanted you know, that knowing about the Arthos it's, itself is uh, one big course, means that we can have uh, a course about Arthos. And uh, but uh, we have limited time, and in our embedded system design, 
I want that we by force to start the Arduino as soon as possible that we can see the various parts in Arduino and you can learn one embedded system better. Then uh, I will stop the auto spark here. But what I think uh, what I think is that um, we should uh, learn more about this auto spark. Okay. Now I cook one <laughs> task for you, which is based on these videos. Okay, let me tell you. Uh, the things, just one minute, please. Okay, I should unmute you. I don't know how to unmute. Yes, now. Oh, okay, please see me. Uh, actually, there is the one big book, okay, about authors that I don't want that you read that book. And because now you are familiar with the online reading, then there is no problem. Simply you can uh, listen this, this uh, subject from the video that I download. You also can download it from YouTube. Uh, from DigiKey, they made very nice video about uh, uh, about the uh, auto spark, and uh, we can review. Actually, your task for the midterm exam is this. Half of the mark for the midterm exam is watching these 10 videos and making the report on that. Nice thing for this video is that you can take all the quotes from GitHub and they made it free on GitHub. Uh, I think I also see that today. Let me. Yes, I think it's there. Just hold on. Uh, we can do two things. One is that I can share all the videos for you, or I can give the link for you to download. Which one is better for you? Just send uh, the link. The link is better. Thank you, I think I will do both. Uh, I put one intro uh, things that they put uh, simply in the YouTube. You can download them, okay? And GitHub also I will share. Besides, uh, I will uh, share this video here also. If you want, you can download it from here. Okay, then I purposefully put it the name for task number five because this is half of your midterm exam. Okay, you should make the PPT based on this video. Each video is around 10 minutes around. Then uh, these are 10 video, 10 multiplied by this is 100 minutes around two hours like that. I think if you see, uh, you will have the nice idea about uh, this Arthospot and good things in this video is that they are going to talk uh, regarding the Arduino and Arthos. That is why I select them for you. Okay, did you understand? Did you understand? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, suppose, yes, sir. on the court, Jahat, can you tell me what is the task? Yes, 
What is the task club? Who can tell me what is the task? Sir, watch the all video and make a P, make a PDF based on all video. Yes, and this is fifty percent of your midterm exam. Okay, and you know that we have fifty and fifty. Means that 50 is final, 50 is midterm exam. Means that 25 marks is from this task. Okay. Yes, sir. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Are yes, you still understand? Okay. Turn on your camera. Let us finish the lecture soon. Turn on your camera. Fast. Okay. Mala, I didn't see. Oh, I saw. That problem is solved, Mala, now? Yes. Okay, good, good. Okay, very good. Let me take the photo. And then, I don't know. I should take care of everything in the lecture, even the repairman in Mala's <laughs> <laughs> room. Anyway. No problem. That was funny, but I think if we record the movie, that was very nice. <laughs> that was a nice thing. Okay, Roy, I didn't see you. Where is Roy? Ah, Roy, I see. Okay, good. Any question, please? Okay, I will share the PPT. Please review these PPTs, okay? And uh, read them. Really, this two week was just some introductory regarding the embedded system. We will start from next Monday, real embedded system, and start the M Arduino, and you will enjoy more. These are some theoretical parts that we should just read. We should know, but these are not that much we can say important than working with Arduino. Okay, any question? No question, sir. No, no question, sir. No question. Okay, Reza, you are vanished, but oh, I saw you. Okay. Good, good. See Sorry, you. What, no, no, I saw you. I saw you. I saw you. Take care. See you.